All right, so the 101st Airborne Division out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, is officially deploying more than 500 soldiers from Fort Campbell down to North Carolina to help the North Carolina National Guard out with the aid and relief efforts after Hurricane Helene. Obviously, they have a lot more capabilities than just the average people that are coming in there, and the North Carolina National Guard is very overtaxed right now because the devastation is absolutely unbelievable. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. Um I know guys personally that I've talked to that said they've been doing this thing for a very long time. They've doing this aid and relief effort stuff around around the country, and that this is worse than Katrina. This is worse than anything that they've ever seen in their entire career. I've also got a lot of other friends that said there's folks coming in from out of state that were at Hurricane Katrina as well that said this is the worst they've ever seen in their 30, 40 years of doing the job. So... Anyway, I'm going to read the immediate release from the the media official public release from the 101st Airborne Division Public Affairs Office. So it says, for immediate release, October 5th, 2024, release number 25, TAC 2. 101st Airborne Division soldiers support Hurricane Helene response. Fort Campbell, Kentucky. More than 500 soldiers from the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault are departing Fort Campbell today to assist in Hurricane Helene response efforts led by the North Carolina National Guard and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. The soldiers, part of Task Force Falcon, are equipped with over four, with over 60 all-terrain vehicles and are trained to perform various tasks as requested by civilian authorities. These tasks include search and rescue, medical aid, uh, route assessment, clearance, traffic control, warehouse management, supply distribution, debris removal, general transportation, and equipment maintenance. Quote, we are proud to support this effort and help American citizens in times of need, end quote, said Lieutenant Colonel Walt Gray, Task Force Falcon Commander. Quote, our training prepares us to respond quickly in challenging situations, and this mission highlights the importance of that preparation, end quote. Additionally, the division is sending over 15 utility and cargo helicopters and crews for personnel and logistics movement. Quote, the Wings of Destiny Brigade is proud to have been called upon to provide support to the citizens that have been impacted by Hurricane Helene, end quote, said Colonel Tyler Partridge, 101st Combat Aviation Brigade Commander. Quote, our aircraft, our air crew members train every day to be ready for any mission and always stand ready to support our fellow Americans, end quote. The Department of Defense will remain engaged with FEMA and federal and state and local partners to coordinate recovery efforts. Now, there's also been lots of other folks talking about the uh, 101st Airborne coming out there because the 82nd Airborne uh, recently sent folks as well. I believe at the uh, request of the Federal Emergency Management Agency and in support of North Carolina and North Carolina National Guard, U.S. Army North has mobilized active duty Title 10 troops to assist with Hurricane Helene response and recovery efforts. Soldiers, equipment, and resources from the 82nd Combat Aviation Brigade, 82nd Airborne Division, and 20th Engineer Brigade of the... 13th Airborne Corps began moving from Fort Liberty, North Carolina on October 3rd, 2024 to affected areas in the vicinity of Asheville, North Carolina. The support package includes rotary wing air support and various engineering equipment used for emergency route clearance. Now, I have a lot of friends that have been up in Asheville and the areas surrounding there, and they've worked directly with the 82nd uh, Combat Aviation Brigade. They said those guys were awesome. They said they were absolutely crushing it crushing relief efforts so they're out there dropping supplies with chinook helicopters they're doing all kinds of aid and relief efforts they're bringing mres to bring in water um they're they're capable of doing tons of different things so it's awesome that these guys are out there too um, active duty soldiers are going to be supporting the dual status commander of north carolina alongside partners from fema and other state and local agencies as needed the Joint Force Land Component Commander through U.S. NORTHCOM is the primary Department of Defense organization coordinating defense support of civil authorities to assist federal partners in responding to natural or man-made disasters. Quote, Our North is committed to providing critical support to North Carolina and our federal partners in the wake of Hurricane Helene. Our soldiers are assisting with response and recovery efforts, ensuring that communities receive the help they need during this challenging time, end quote, said Major General Scott M. Sherman, R. North, and JFLCC Commanding General. 
Hurricane Helene made landfall in the big the bid uh, sorry, the Big Bend area of Florida Gulf Coast as a Category 4 storm late in the evening of September 26, 2024. The storm caused severe flooding across the southern Appalachians with strong gusts uh, damaging property and downing trees and power lines from the Gulf Coast to the North Carolina mountains. So I'm sure you've seen the videos all over the place. There are power lines down everywhere. Trees fell on people's houses. There's com- like roads are completely destroyed there is a lot of areas that are completely impassable, especially to folks that are high up in the mountains. There's only one road in, one road out type deal. So there's a lot of search and rescue missions being conducted. A lot of folks that got trapped in their homes or trapped in their neighborhoods that couldn't drive out of there. Um, and fortunately, there's a lot of folks like this that they're getting out there. They're clearing debris. They're clearing brush. They're clearing roadways. They're helping repair bridges and helping build uh, roadways up so people can get in and out at least with four by fours or horses. Um, and there's people coming from all over the country to help perform aid and relief, but it's cool that they're finally able to get title 10 folks in there to help because it's going to, it's going to be a huge help for everybody in the region. It'll take a lot of the, it'll take a lot of the stress and the burden off of the national guard because they are absolutely overtaxed right now. Um, they're out there with tons of other national guard units from across the entire Eastern seaboard, I've seen National Guard units from everywhere um, coming up there to help. So it's awesome to see that that people are able to pull some strings to to get some Title Ten folks out there to help out in the aid and relief efforts. I know I've been talking to a lot of folks in the region constantly over the past like week, and I mean, obviously the the entire town of Chimney Rock is completely gone. All of it got pushed into Lake Lure. Now Lake Lure. From what I'm hearing, Lake Lure has like 15 feet of debris floating on the surface, like like 15 feet deep of debris. And actually, the funny thing is that there is an actual the there's an old town on the bottom of Lake Lure that they flooded a long time ago. Um, that's been there forever. So now you've got this old town sitting on the bottom of Lake Lure, and then some water, and then 15 feet of debris from Chimney Rock sitting on the top. So that's pretty unreal to think about but currently as it stands there's like a lot of coordination the hard part is that it's it's difficult to get people to coordinate when you've got all these different agencies working together and that is always the hardest piece when like something some disaster happens and all these units flood the area they have to establish like a command and control element so that they can coordinate with flights because some people are still trapped and there's there's all these search and rescue missions that are happening, but there's not a lot of logs. So there may be like missions getting called in that are repeat missions from previous ones that were already conducted. And so that that creates a lot of friction because there's people that are flying out to perform search and rescue or to do wellness checks on people that may have already been done before. And it could be potentially wasting an air asset that could have gone somewhere else and that could end up costing lives. Um, and so that's one of the things that a lot of the folks on the ground, a lot of the nonprofit organizations that are out there, like Save Our Allies, they're trying to coordinate with the National Guard and the Title Ten folks so that they they can compile lists of search and rescue missions that need to still get completed and ones that were already done, as well as um, coordinating aid and relief efforts, like what areas need supplies, what supplies do they need? If there's niche supplies that people don't have, they're coordinating with folks coming into town to bring the right stuff up there that they need. Cause there's a lot of like extraneous things like livestock. A lot of folks have pets, like they need pet food, uh, toiletries is always, always a need water food. There's a lot of stuff going on. Plus there's also people that are like on dialysis that need help with that. There's people that are taking cancer treatments that aren't able to get that. So there's a lot of coordination going on with a lot of different agencies, some federal, some state, some civilian. And really at the end of the day, this is a team effort. So we have to work together to to solve this, to solve this problem and to find common solutions. So um, anyway, everybody that's out there right now, keep up the awesome work. Um, I'm doing whatever I can to help get the word out, but you know, Keep it up because we're, we're counting on you.